God's promises for your protection, next on The Good News Program. The program you are about to watch is part of a free series we are making available to you as a gift from Greg Fritz Ministries entitled Divine Protection. Visit gregfritz.org to download the MP3s and watch the streaming video for free by entering code FREE at checkout. Are you tired of hearing bad news? Tune into the good news of the gospel. Welcome to Good News with Greg Fritz. Hello, I'm Greg Fritz. Welcome to the Good News program where you're going to get more good news in the next 30 minutes than most people get all day long. I hope you're ready to get into the Word of God because we have got promises fresh from God's Word. They're old, but they're still fresh. They're still applicable and they work just as well today as they ever have. We can apply these promises to our lives and really look at life in a whole different way and a whole di with a whole different view. I want to make sure that you know that you can get study notes. These, uh, this is the outline for all these teachings. It's absolutely free. Go to my website and pick that up. We also have the free streaming video and the downloadable audio for all these sessions. But I want to tell you about this. I forgot to tell you in the last session. But we uh, have a bundle, and the bundle is um, on a USB. It includes all 15 sessions of Divine Protection. It also includes this series, which is a four-message series on supernatural protection, supernatural provision, and the study notes. It's all on, on this thumb drive, and you can put this in your computer. If you have a smart TV, you can plug it into your TV. I was at a church the other day. And we were uh, giving these away, selling them. And one of the kids went to their parents and said, we have got to get a new television so we can plug that in and watch the Good News program on our TV. I wholeheartedly agreed. I don't know what the father's reluctance was, but everybody needs a smart TV. Um, and if you have a USB port, you can watch these programs. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, we put it on mine, and they'll just, they're, they're just all listed right there, uh, 1 through 15, and it's very simple. You can plug it into your car if you have a USB port in your car, and all the audio is listed, and you can listen from one to the next. Uh, and so we've made these things available uh, to our viewers because it is time to fill up with the Word of God more so than ever before. We need to be filled with God's Word. We need to feed on things that are going to increase our faith uh, so we can cope with the pressures of life. Let's talk about protection now. Uh, in our last uh, program, we closed with this, Ephesians 6, 1. It says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment, with promise that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. And all he's saying here is, when you learn how to follow that inward witness, then you're going to follow, you're going to live your life in the center of God's will, and your life is going to be secure. It's going to be protected. God knows how to protect you, and God wants to, to, to help you finish out or finish your course with joy. We have a right to be here and to finish our course. We don't have to live in dread or in fear. We don't have to be intimidated by politics or globalism or whatever else people are concerned about. We can live our lives confidently as children of God, knowing that God is our protector. He wants to be your protector. I have a, a, another verse I wanted to mention here. Psalm 50 verse 16 says, But to the wicked, God says, what right have you to declare my statutes or take my covenant in your mouth? And, and I bring that up just to make this point that there's a difference between you and other people. When you have uh, a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, you have a covenant. You can declare his statutes in your life. People that don't, don't know God can't do that. They don't have this option. God hasn't promised to protect them and provide for them. They don't have that option, that, that covenant, but you do. And so to point that out is important because this helps 
people like us realize that, hey, I do have special rights and privileges. I am different than other people who don't know God. God has made promises to me that He is ready and willing to enforce in my life. So I don't have to live in fear and in dread. You know, people have been predicting annihilation, worldwide disaster for years. And, you know, people buy into this. They believe that there's going to be a meteorite that's going to crash into the earth from outer space or global warming is going to cause the polar ice caps to melt and we're all going to drown or, you know, or, or the ozone hole is going to get so big that we're all going to burn. Uh, there's just so many end of the world scenarios to create fear and dread. And, and a lot of the secular teaching and secular media is designed to, to cause you to feel insignificant, like your life doesn't really matter, like you're just a speck in this vast universe and you don't have any uh, confidence. You, you have no reason to believe that your life is any more valuable than that of a tree or a snail or an owl and, and that, that your life could be snipped away at any moment. And, and the scriptures, they teach against this. They preach against this. Protection prom the Bible's full of protection promises, and they're for you. They're not for someone else. These promises were made from God to you. You say, well, how do you know they apply to me? Because 2 Corinthians 1.20 says, In Him all the promises of God are yes, and in Him, amen. Are you in Him? That's the difference. That's why Psalm 15, 50, 16 said that what right have the ungodly to take my covenant in their mouth? What right have they to declare my statutes? Well, they don't. But if you're in Him, you do. These promises apply to you. In Him, all the promises of God are yes and in Him, amen. That means that everything that belongs to Jesus belongs to you. So do you think God's protection was provided for Jesus? Of course it was. Jesus said, nobody takes my life. He walked through the crowd when they wanted to stone him. He walked through the crowd when they wanted to throw him off a cliff. He, he walked in divine protection. Well, all the promises of God are yes to you because you're in him. So these actually belong to you. These promises can be personally uh, 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 embraced by you and I as, as people of the new covenant. So l let me look at a couple scriptures here. In, in Romans, it says, The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. That just simply means if you're going to live in sin and as a sinner, then there's a sentence of death hanging over your head. As Christians, we don't have to live that way. Romans 8, 2 says, The law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. So as a Christian, we don't have to feel condemned. We don't have to feel endangered. We don't have to live a life filled with dread and anxiety about what could happen, what might happen, what should happen, what the experts say will happen. We don't have to live our lives that way because we have the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus working in us. The law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. So yes, the wages of sin is death. If you're going to live in sin and, and live as a sinner and not accept God's offer of forgiveness, it's going to lead to death. There are really no rights and privileges that you can expect from God. But if you're going to accept Jesus and live in this new covenant, you can expect certain rights and privileges that God has given you as a believer. And to not count on those is really living, living life uh, at a lower place, not accepting and receiving God's best in your life. You don't have to do it. You can embrace this and live life happily. You can be glad to be alive. Man, I just don't understand people. I don't care how bad the world gets. You've been given the chance to live. You know, you could be like you were before you existed. That means you could have never been. I am so glad that God has given us the chance to live in any generation. And, 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 and we only get one life 
to do this with. Let's make the most of it. Let's not live our lives in fear and dread and worry. Let's look at the scriptures and take them personally. Let me give you, let me give you one. We're going to give you a whole list of these. But Hebrews 13, 5 and 6 says, Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, or God has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what, what can man do to me. Man, that is so powerful. You need to meditate on that. God has said, I will never leave you and forsake you. Now, you may not feel God and you may not see God, but he said, he would never leave you or forsake you so that you could say some things, so that you could think differently, so you can believe differently. He said this so that you could say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? You need to be saying, I need to be saying that. As things get worse and worse in our world and the world around us gets more threatening, more intimidating, we can still say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Well, you know, the answer is nothing without your permission, God's permission. They couldn't stone Jesus without his approval. They couldn't throw him off a cliff. They couldn't stone Paul without his approval. You know, now the Bible does say that many in Hebrews 11, many were martyred not accepting deliverance. So they decided they would, wanted to give their life for Christ. They wanted to give their life, and that was the way they wanted to end their life. They didn't accept deliverance, so evidently it was offered to them. You have a lot to say about how long you live your life. You have a right to claim of your full length of days to live a long, satisfying life. These things belong to you. Let's go to Isaiah 41 and uh, all of these scriptures are, are familiar probably to you, um, but, but sometimes we live as if they're not true. You know, there's, it's one thing to know the scripture and to re recognize it and remember what it said. It's another thing to reckon them to be so for you, to live as if they belong to you. Isaiah 41.10 says, Fear not, for I'm with you. That's kind of what he said in Hebrews 13, wasn't it? Just the very same thing. He said, fear not, for I'm with you. Be not dismayed, for I'm your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Man, that's comforting. That's, that is a, a promise from God to you. And if God is saying that about you, then you must be safe. He didn't say all that, fear not for I'm with you, be not dismayed, I'm your God, I'll strengthen you and help you and uphold you, but you might get killed inadvertently. There may be some tragedy sneak up on you and snuff your life out, and if that happens, you know, you'll be in heaven. That's not what he said. He's giving us promises that pave the way for a long, healthy, fulfilling, fruitful life. And that's what he wants for each and every one of his children. You know, I said this in the very first session or two of this teaching, but this is not survival of the fittest. We're not at the top of the food chain, part of the food chain. We, don't, we aren't the diet of some other creature on this planet uh, that, that eat human flesh. We, uh, we, the, the food chain was designed to support human life. Each and every human that's put here was not put here to see if he could, you know, survive it. We were put here to live a life for God. We have a destiny. We have a, a, a divine purpose for being here. And we have a right, especially as you see your covenant with God, uh, we have a right to expect to live out the length of our days. This is not just for prophets in the Old Testament. It's not just for the disciples and the apostles in the New Testament. These promises belong to you. You can accept them for yourself in your own life, and you really need to. This is what makes the Word of God practical. It's not something we read on Sundays just to try to escape the pressures of life and dream, you know, about, about a life that, 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 that exists maybe for someone else. These are promises from God to you. You can implement these you can embrace these, you can confess these 
in your life, and they'll make a difference in the way you respond. Uh, you know, the, the Bible says, the wicked flee when no man pursues, but the righteous are bold as a lion. That's a picture you need to get of yourself. I am not going to live my life out uh, timidly, sheepishly, in, in fear and anxiety. We, we are bold as a lion. Why? Because our sins have been forgiven. Maybe the wages of sin is death. Yes, it is. But I have a right to live because my sins have been forgiven. I don't have a death sentence over me. I don't have a sense of condemnation and doom that is, that is clouding my future. God has forgiven me and you. He has promised to provide for us, which we'll get into in another series in the future. And he's promised to protect us and take care of us as long as we're here. And if those things are true, and they are, then we ought not be worried like other people are worried. Let me give you a couple more. Psalm 127, 1 and 2, and I've quoted this one several times, but I love this uh, in, in uh, <clears throat> connection with our, with our theme here. It says, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. I would rather have God guarding my life than a personal bodyguard. <clears throat> I would rather have God in charge of my home than a personal security system, although I'm not against those things. Now, I'm, I'm fine uh, installing those things. I, I lock my doors. I have, a, I have a gun, and I have am, ammunition, and I've done things in the natural, but ultimately my safety and protection is in God's hands. I trust God for my ultimate safety and provision. And, uh, and, and you should do the same thing. It'll help you sleep at night. Notice what he says. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early and to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he gives his beloved sleep. So the point here is, <clears throat> if you're sitting up late and getting up early because you're afraid for your safety, you're wasting your time. God is your guard, and God wants to give you sleep. He wants us to sleep like a baby or sleep like a log. You know, somebody said, how'd you sleep last night? I slept like a baby. I woke up every two hours and cried. So that's really not the kind of sleep we want. We'd rather sleep like a log where you just go to sleep and you get good, deep rest and you wake up refreshed and ready to go. God wants that for his people. He promised that he gives his beloved sleep. Let's go to Isaiah 43, and there's uh, another one here. Isaiah 43, when you pass through the waters, I'll be with you, and through the rivers, they'll not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Isn't that powerful? I just love these promises. They, 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 and, and, you know, these can be symbolic. You can use these for any form of, uh, of challenge, attack, anything that, that comes against you, um, your safety, your, your well-being. Uh, these represent waters and fires and floods and different things that would, that would come against you. Um, you can trust God in the midst of it. You can trust God to protect your life and to preserve your life. You know, I stay at a lot of uh, a lot of hotels, and um, and and it's it's really um, it's been an, uh, amusing to me at times. You stay in a and some some hotels are nicer than others, obviously, and and uh, most of the time the pastor will come and get me if I fly to a city. I don't necessarily rent a car, so the pastor will come and get me, and uh, and every once in a while. The pastor will come get me at a hotel that I'm staying at that he's actually paying for. And rather than pull up to the door under the awning, you know, they'll park in the parking lot. And so, you, you know, you just walk out to the parking lot and you get in the car and you leave. And then when they bring you back, instead of pulling under the awning, they, they park way out there and, and they let you, let you walk. And, and, you know, you want to say, well, why don't you just pull up to the door? 
uh, well, oh, that's for that's for other people. That that's for that's for uh, customers and you know and business people and whatever. It's like, well, you are the other people. You paid for the room. I mean, it's it's for us. It, they made this awning and this door for us. I've had them literally park in the rain and let me walk through the rain to get in because they didn't want to pull up to the door because that's for somebody else. It's not for somebody else. It's for you. It's for me. That's why it's there. Say, well, I didn't know how long I was going to be in. You can park there for 30 minutes. I've parked there for an hour before getting my stuff together and going back out to get my car. They built it for us. <laughs> and, and so, you know, you, you, you want to impress on people this in the natural, which really doesn't matter. But people do this spiritually. We read the Bible and these promises are just amazing promises. They promise you so many things in so many areas of life. But many times people read them as if they're for the other person. Well, that was for the apostles or that was for the prophet or that was for somebody that walks with God and is in the ministry. No, these promises are for you. You can pull right up to the door and you can get out and say, you know what? God promised protection for me, provision for me. And when I go through the fire, I'll not be burned. When I walk through the water, I will not drown. God has promised to preserve my life in the midst of trouble. And you can quote them as if they actually belong to you. Man, if, when you start doing the Bible this way, that's when your quality of life really changes. This is not something that's just for church. It's not just for a meeting or Sunday school. These promises work in your home, in your life, in your neighborhood, in your city, in your car, every single day. You need to believe God that you're safe when you get in your car, that you're protected when you drive across town. If you get on an airplane, you need to believe God it's going to land. Now, I've done that many times. I am not afraid that I'm going to crash in an airplane. God's got a hundred ways to keep me off a plane if it's going to crash. And one of the main ways is I believe He would alert me and stop me. But He, he could do so many things to keep me off that plane that if I'm serving God and I get on an airplane, it's going to land. Now, it might be diverted. He never said you wouldn't deal with a diversion. And I have landed at a different airport for fuel or weather or whatever. But there's a whole difference between being diverted and crashing and dying. And that's what we're saying is God never promised to do away with all of our challenges and all of our problems. But death is in a class by itself. You do not have to live your life with the dread of an untimely death hanging over your head. Don't allow that to happen. Listen. The righteous, uh, the, the, uh, the wicked flee when no man pursues. The righteous are bold as a lion. And one saying goes this way, and I've already quoted it in this series, but it says, A coward dies a thousand deaths, but a brave man only dies once. You don't have to go through your life twitching and, and flinching every time something happens, like this could be it for me. We can live with confidence that God put us here, that God is protecting us. I mean, goodness, I haven't even gotten to the angel scriptures yet, but he's given his angels charge over us. They are our bodyguards to keep us in all of our ways, lest we dash our foot against a stone. Here it is in, in Psalm 34, 7. It says, the angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fears him and delivers them. Man, you don't have to see an angel to know that they're working for you. I saw the promise of God right there. There are angels that are protecting me right now. They're protecting you right now. Relax in that fact. Relax in that truth. And, and live like that promise belongs to you. Psalm 91, 11 says, He shall give His angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. Isn't that good? That is just powerful. There, there are, I, I just scratched the surface. You know, I went through the Psalms and I highlighted every protection promise in Psalms. And there's so many of them, I don't have time to read them all to you. But, but there's one after another. We can run through a troop and leap over a wall. They talk about how God is our protection and God is our, some trust in chariots and some in horses. But I'll remember the name of the Lord my God. That it's God that delivers us, not the strength of, a, of, of our bodies or the strength of a horse. But God delivers us from our enemies. It is just so powerful. I want to read Psalm 121, verses 2 through 8. 
He says, and, and, and again, I want you to imagine this as you're the one that gets to drive up to the door. You're the one they made the, 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 the awning for in the, the front walkway and the front door. You're the one that the hotel, uh, you know, um, bellman is going to open the door for. You're the one that they're going to waiting to get your luggage. These promises belong to you, not somebody else. You, Psalm 121, verse 2, my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your feet to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel, and that's you if you're in Christ, shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forever. Wow, when's the last time you read that verse, those verses, and applied them to you because they do apply to you? You know, if we just believe those six verses, we would have a lot less anxiety and a lot less to keep our mind occupied. You, you might have time to have fun. You might have time to laugh if we would believe some of these verses. These verses were not written for peaceful times only. They weren't written for safe you know, societies. These scriptures were written for the people of God in any time, in any society, including you and I right now. Let's believe that what God said he meant. Amen. Amen. Let me just tell you about this. We're doing a project. I'd love for you to get involved. I don't do these things all the time, but I want to publish two books. I'm going to have to self-publish because my publishing company, Harrison House, is backed up with books. They don't have time to do it for many, many months. I don't want to wait that long. I believe if you'll help me, I can self-publish. I'll have more control over it that way anyway. And we want to get this process going. In fact, I've already hired an editor, and they're starting on the first book, which is Living in Stressful Times Without Losing Your Mind. And I taught much of this on this program. If you enjoyed that teaching, you can help me make it available in book form to people around the world. Pray about helping us. I want to raise $15,000, and you may want to write a check and do the whole thing right now. And you say, well, what would you do with the rest of it? Man, we have other projects that we can use the money for, so don't be afraid. Just go ahead and give liberally. Uh, pray about it. If you'd like to be part of this project, call our helpline. The number's on the screen. Or go to my website and just go to the donate button and give a gift today. And we'll put it to use uh, printing books and getting the good news around the world. God bless you. Thank you so much for being a part of this audience. We love you. And until next time, remember this. The good news is so good, the bad news doesn't matter. Do you struggle with fear and anxiety concerning your personal safety? This series will teach you that God's Word is filled with promises about your protection. Call our helpline at 918-749-7744, Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Central Time. I want to publish two more books. I have two already. If you haven't gotten them, we'd love for you to have them. Um, but I want to publish two more. One of them is called Living in Stressful Times Without Losing Your Mind. I've already sent it to the editor. We're going to raise $15,000, and I know we can do it. It's not a problem. If you'd like to be part of that, we're going to print this book. It, it, it's going to be printed and go out to people all over the world. Contact our helpline and give an offering today to help us or go to my website and hit the donate button. We would love to hear from you today.